For sure. From Andrea Cameron. It's no, and I hear this a lot, and I hear this, and I read it, and I try to understand it, but I wonder if it's truly a comparison. And I see this a lot. This has been one of the arguments. Well, coaches are hopping around all the time. Lane Kiffin comes to mind. Is it still comparable to a player being able to accept or have the transfer portal openings? And there's one time. A coach can leave four times in four years. Is that comparable to what coaches are making or universities are making to what money players or student athletes should make? If we Should we even say student athletes? Should that even be a term? Now, we have an interview with Jordan Neighbors, and he brought up Baylor and the education of what he was looking for as well. But is it an, is it an analogy that players should be able to get whatever they want because coaches get whatever they want? Coaches are actually adults, adults <laughs> and or, and some of them you wonder, but also that's a job. Now, is college football a job? I think the argument could be said yes and no, it's a job. Uh, all right, 254 339 1122. I don't know why there's like a pack of people that want it to be more pro than it is, you know, what it is. And I know that it's more football than it is academics in a lot of ways, but I just don't understand the desire. So maybe some people can help me out of why you want college football to become the NFL. You already have the NFL. And the NFL actually has more rules than college football. The the grown-ups have more rules. Mm -hmm. And and so I I agree with the whole the coaches can move around, but also the coaches are 35, 45, 55, 65 years old. We're talking about 17, 18-year-old kids. And while many of them are adults in a lot of ways, and some of them probably do provide, and their NIL deals are going to provide for families. That's something we don't talk about nearly enough, is there's people who don't have money that this is like their way to put milk on the table every month. And that's something that doesn't really get talked about a yep. whole lot because we focus on, well, what cars are they buying with it? Or what fur coats are they going to be on the sidelines with Barry Switzer style? Like Remember, that like that was a reality in college football in the 80s. Barry Switzer on the sideline in a full-blown fur coat just flaunting the the money aspect of college football. So it's not like, I mean, that was 40 years ago at this point he was doing that. But, I, I mean, I do look at it this way, too. Is like, are, are high school kids, do we want to just start letting them transfer to whatever high school they want well, to? Why not? should coach High school coaches move. Why can't the high school kids move? Or like, where, where do we actually have rules? Like, that's the only thing that I'm curious about is – like, since when are we making the, the – they're not all kids, but the young adults have all of the same rights as the grown adults. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, not just because they're Americans, but because Correct. it seems like everything now, everybody should get everything At given every time, to them. And I know that you have yeah. to have a talent to get this. Here's a couple of more notes as well uh, from John Kelly. Basically, to poach sign recruits to make the better – off more better off but as far as the rich get richer smu would not have received the death penalty in the 80s you're nope, exactly right here's a title john lafoe i'm a texas fan and i agree nil has changed so much i'm just happy to see our boosters doing something useful and then an army fan my cousin signed eli henderson go razorbacks all right army hey, fan congratulations yeah. to eli uh, as well pig. by the way i had a super chat here uh, i want to get to that from uh, michael Deitra, I guess. Uh, hard to turn down a million bucks. Recruiting becomes driven only by big money. College football becomes a reality TV show. Yep. I mean, that's... The, uh, and I, from JG, yeah. the NIL, NIL is no different than high school net worth individuals getting private tutoring for their children because they have the money to pay versus public school kids. It's a significant leverage. Uh, one of the other things is this, is that I'm not against someone getting what their value is. I'm not against that. I'm not against some of the changes. It's And the reason we're seeing, like... From here to here, the pendulum has gone completely the opposite way. because the NCAA, NCAA sat on their ass. They were arrogant. They didn't think anything would ever change. They could always just kick it down the, the can down the road. And all of a sudden, just like that, overnight, everything changed. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be like, hey, you come play here, you get $50,000. And we're using Texas as the example because that's the most notable one. And it's the one that's the most recent as well since that came out late last week. So it's just a, it's a nifty example to use. But certainly a lot of other programs are doing similar to that. But it was never supposed to be that. It was supposed to be, hey, this particular offensive lineman, we think he'd be, you know, great, blah, blah, blah. Let's sign him to a Texas Roadhouse deal. 
and you know we'll maximize this value well now it's turned into where let's say a texas roadhouse for example just says hey if you play at this school you get fifty thousand dollars it's not about their name image likeness it's about just signing them to yeah, play no that's where i have the issue yeah. it's not about the money it's not about these guys getting paid it's not about any of that it's about that it's not at all what it was supposed to be and it's just turned into straight up like the highest bidder and, and i know somebody will say well that's how it's always been i get it but like it i just i'm not a fan of it all being uh, so let, out in the open and, and blatantly obvious. let me ask you this question of everybody that signed today that is getting some sort of promise with an nil how many of them would have actually signed with that actual said school without it well let's see uh, where armani winfield commits in about 45 can, minutes because yeah. i can tell you that cam answer. dewberry uh, signed with texas a&m according to scott yes that's true yeah texas a&m yeah. gets cam dewberry one of the Big highest time. ranked players as well all right uh, we're going to hear again from two baylor signees from today Jordan Neighbors from Rockwall Heath and also Kyler uh, Jordan from uh, Cooper High School in Lubbock. Jason Howell in the Aggie surge this year with recruiting. Uh, also, Joey Coppin on Ohio State at 5. We'll have um, Anthony Dasher on Georgia 415. And Jeff Howell joins us sometime around 430 or so on UT at a big day that they've had. And if you look at the names in the list of the top 5, 10 teams, there's some missing, Florida, a couple of others. But most of them are the same names that you always see with an addition of a name or two. When we come back, we'll hear from Jordan Neighbors of Rockwall Heath. This was not a given. He committed to Baylor quite some time ago, but with Joey McGuire in Texas Tech with a good relationship, a great one with him, there might have been some consternation. That's a word I used. His thoughts about the last few weeks leading up to National Signing Day and his thoughts about Signing Day, in fact, today. This is Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports.